It's hard for us in modern America to know what it was like to either be a slave or be a slave owner. Although the United States Constitution protects citizens from cruel and unusual punishment, it did not protect the slave because to many Americans in the 17 and 1800s, the black Negro people were not citizens but property that they owned, much like a dog, a horse, or some farm animal. Because of this wrong thinking, slaves were ill-treated. Even before the rooster crowed each morning six days a week, slaves had to be up getting ready for the long work day. Their breakfast was prepared from their own supplies that most slaves kept. They lived together in plantations as families and raised chickens and had their own gardens. The men, while breakfast was a-cooking, went out into the dark early morning to feed the livestock to get the animals ready for the work field day. A large plantation would have from 20 to 50 slaves. There was all kinds of jobs to do on the plantation. By 6 a.m., the slaves were out. They were in the fields, either cotton corn or rice fields. Some slaves went into the Mazza's big house to care for them, cooking, cleaning, ironing, and many of the house chores that we do today. Black babies were kept in nurseries, much like big churches have. Older black mamas would come and care for them while their mothers worked at their task. By 9 or 10, black children were then put to work. With the setting sun, most slaves were free from their daily toil in the fields, but during the harvest season, many were forced to work indoors even after field work. They ate their evening meal together, and then they'd go back to work. And cotton needed gin and corn a cracking, the tools fixed, so you can see the slave's life was exhausting. Each Sunday, the masters gave the slaves their only free time, one day a week. The slaves became oftentimes more godly than their own white owners. The slaves especially liked stories like Joseph in prison, and the Israelites in captivity, and found comfort in the fact that the Lord the God would deliver them from the bondage someday. So they prayed and sang about such a great deliverance. And by the end of the Civil War, that deliverance came. But before that deliverance came, they suffered greatly. Oftentimes, they and their children were sold into slavery. Or worse, a husband and wife would be sold separately. Children would be taken from them. If they protested, they were punished in front of all as an example. During the early days of black slavery in England, during the 1600s, punishments meant things like whipping, branding, dunking under water, stocks, or sometimes worse, having an ear cut off. In America, by the Civil War, most slaves were beat with whips or paddle boards that would leave scars for life. The slaves struggled and endured until finally, after a long, painful ordeal, they were emancipated at the end of the Civil War. So that we can relate to what it was like being a slave, I'd like to tie it into a Bible example. According to the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, because Adam and Eve sinned, they sold all mankind into spiritual slavery to Satan and his demon force. We didn't choose it or desire it. It fell upon us by our parents, just like black children who were born into slavery. Our great Heavenly Father didn't like it one bit, and like Abraham Lincoln set about to change the condition of the slaves, so too, God, he sent his son to set us free from slavery to sin and Satan, the horrible taskmaster who beats human beings far worse than slave owners beat them. Jesus took the beating on our behalf and during his life here suffered greatly, denying himself and taking on the form of a servant. He went to the cross and so when he rose from the dead, he set us free from Satan and sin. Songwriter Bob Dylan said it well in a song, You've got to serve somebody. 
What that means to us listening is that we either will be serving Satan and sin, leading us to death, or Jesus and victory, leading us to life. That's why Jesus said in John 3, 3, you must be born again. You see, we need a complete new life, a new way of living. We need to be emancipated in Christ Jesus who delivered us. If you're not free from sin, you're a slave to Satan by your own choosing. You'll be miserable for eternity. For example, last night, I could hear my neighbors, and uh, a car was acting up or something, and they were, they were drunk is what it was. They pulled into the driveway, and, and I could hear them carousing and carrying on, and I peered out the window to make sure they didn't crash into my car in the driveway because our driveways face each other. And uh, as I looked out the window, it was a pitiful sight. Here's a young man that was in his 20s, and uh, he was drunk. And I looked down there, and I had such a compassion for him because the Lord gave me an understanding of why he's in that condition. You see, he's a slave to sin. He can no longer help himself any more than a black slave that was sold to a white master. He is sold into that sin. The only way he can be set free from the bondage of alcohol, sex, drugs, and horrible riotous living is to receive Christ Jesus into his heart. I have a compassion for that man, and I pray the Lord will give me an opportunity to speak to him as I live here in this neighborhood and with my neighbors round about who are still slaves to Satan. If you're free in Jesus, do all in your power to take your liberty and share it with those bound by Satan's sin and sickness. Deliver them and lead them to Jesus Christ. The Lord will reward us if we serve him in such a great way. Let's pray for them. Father, we pray for our neighbors, perhaps family members, those that are in our schools or where we work, those that are on airplanes as I travel to and fro, or friends like Marshall Foster, Dobson, and all these great evangelists, Lord, that you would lead us wherever we would go. And, and we would share your gospel with many, many people to set them free from Satan and sin. Father, we pray for this nation that, that that slavery to sin would not be a license to destroy this nation. Lord, that we could take the liberty that you have given to us and not misuse it and abuse it, but, but use that liberty to redeem those that are trying to destroy our nation. And Father, we know who the enemy is. It's not our neighbors. It's not those that are in sin, but it's the slave master, Satan himself. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against him in the lives of those that we're praying and interceding for. I ask you, Father, to give a hedge of protection to those listening to this tape, that they'll rise to the occasion and be powerful warriors doing battle for Jesus Christ.